Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're gonna to go over Xmas ornaments, past and presents. So I actually started out with my iPad and my Apple Pen and I actually drew out some uh, ornaments that I wanted to do. And then I was able to take a screenshot and bring it into my Sign Master program, trace them. And uh, then I just made a whole bunch of gnome and different ornaments that I wanted to do that I could customize. So this one I've designed and I've actually put a white bounding box around it with absolutely no outline. And here I'm just going to show you that that would be the cut file. And I'm gonna export that as a PNG. Normally I put cut, I don't know why I typed engrave there. Lack of sleep maybe. But you want to make sure that you have the selected objects, um, that the background is white, 300 dpi, and you export it. So I'm just going to bring in the files. And the first one I'm going to bring in is in the engrave. And you might wonder, why do I have it upside down? And I'm going to take that to line to line tracing, smooth, black and white. I'm gonna go horizontal with this one, six lines per millimeter, and I'll click on next. My speed I'm going to do is 2300 millimeters per minute. I'm switching to dynamic power, so 5% will be my mini minimum, 950, which is 95%, will be my max. And of course, I auto size it because I've designed it to size. So that's why I did it upside down, and you'll see here in a second, I'm going to append the file now and I'm going to import the uh, cut file. And I have my smooth turned on, but I'm going to turn that to vectorize, black and white. I do not have the adaptive quality or the optimized travel on, but I do have the no filling. And I'm going to cut this at 225 millimeters per minute at constant power. So I'm going to change that minimum to as high as what I want constant and I don't touch the auto size at all. So this is why I had it upside down, is because it's going to engrave that first and the resting plate that it's going to uh, fit into <clears throat> is now at the top. And so I'm gonna continue to append the file and I don't change anything from my last setting. I just keep clicking next and create. And I'm gonna do that for as many times as I know that it takes my laser to cut. Okay, so let's go over the basics of cutting material that a lot of people do not know. Make sure your machine is level. Make sure your cutting grate is level as well. And in just a second, I'm going to show you what to do if your material has a little bit of warp to it as well. So uh, this is my brand new OLM3 and I am cutting quarter inch plywood. So I'm just with my machine off, I'm just lining it up to uh, where I want to cut out from the material. So with the uh, 10A laser, it's got the little kickstand there. So I will make sure in several spots especially in uh, the area that I'm going to be engraving, I test it all to be level with that spot. And uh, this way you can also tell if any of your material has a little bit of warp to it. And if I've discovered it's got a little bit of a warp to it, I will use some wedges to lift up my material in some of the places to make sure that it is all level. And one trick is uh, for material that uh, before you raise your uh, little kickstand there, just press down on the material. Of course, you can't do that with hard edges, but um, this will just make sure that you're not scratching any of your material. And I have this sped up a little bit, um, so don't be pressing your machine around as fast as I am, but I've got it all ready to go, double checked, and I'm powering up my machine. Okay, so the first thing I can't stress enough is testing. And uh, so I will actually pull this into Lightburn to do my squares. And uh, I have the speed set. 
and for how many passes and I'll start seeing them actually come out so I've that's how I dial in my cutting for each and every material so I found in between the 300 the 200 I was getting too much scorching the 300 was too slow for me so that's where I decided on the 225 millimeters per minute at the 95% uh, and of course I do pull into light burn as well for grayscale and because uh, uh, this is the uh, um, quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and uh, it takes a little bit more power to be able to get a darker burn so I will make sure I dial in my settings for that as well and right now this is cutting the grandma got ran over by a reindeer ornament in the quarter inch birch plywood here I'm cutting into and I believe this is 4.4 millimeters I use the same exact settings at 225 millimeters per minute at 95% power and I can get through these in two passes and of course if you're using the 5.5 watt um, with this I find um, anywhere from four to five passes to be able to get through it um, with the same exact settings that I just noted and that's all completed and by the second pass they were actually just falling down a little bit because I have it all raised and because I have my uh, OLM3 the foldable legs and I have it lifted up as well with the grate when the laser penetrates the wood the laser is so out of focus by the time it hits the cutting board and the cookie sheet that I have underneath it that I don't even burn it at all I get hardly any smoke so I'm really liking this machine so I'm just going to pick it up and show you how easy it is it's just like butter And so these were the templates I made for my gnome feet that you'll see a little bit later in the video. So I've added the names and the year. So this was on the quarter inch plywood. I just wanted to show you the uh, cutting settings. Never blame your laser. Sometimes your plywood just has uh, too much glue. There's uh, uh, an issue with one of the layers. And that's why never move your material until you know it's cut for sure. So this one I knew it wasn't cut out, but I can take an X-Acto knife and I'll be able to finish it up. So this is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, all painted. And uh, these are some of the norm ornaments that I did. And so as you can see, I engraved the feet as well with the names and the year. So I had a lot of fun painting these. And some reindeer I'm uh, working on and some mom ornaments and some dad memorials. This is last year's, my two layer ornaments because I started out very basic. Um, Hunter's Prayer, this is before I realized that the uh, black and white dithering does a much better job on the birch plywood. And so yeah, just some very basic one layer ornaments that I did last year. So that's why I thought I'd uh, take some time and play with my machine to try and give a, a 2D, 3D effect to some of the ornaments that I was working with. Okay, I'm in the Christmas spirit, and no, not into the Christmas spirits. If you think I slur my words, it's just because there's so much in my brain that I'm trying to get out of my mouth at the same time. I'm going to give you guys that file for subscribers only. You can also join Die Sign CDN. Um, and just going over the website here, there's a discussion page. A lot of people ask some questions. And uh, if you go to the um, featured I have files that I've downloaded um, and recent posts. So if you want to sk skip the, dis the sk discussion, you see what I mean there? There's too much in my brain trying to come out of my mouth at the same time. So yes, you can go to the media and you'll see all recent files that were uh, uploaded. So I'm going to be adding some more. And uh, if you go to the file page, so you'll see some are PNGs uh, and some have requested SVGs. Now you'll see a .svgg there. Just to download it, you'll click on that. After you download it, right click on your mice, mouse 
and rename the file just the .svg and it will open right up. And that's it for today. So please like and subscribe. All I want for Christmas is a thousand subscribers. <laughs> and this Canadian gal appreciates each and every one of you. So now I ask you, what will you create? Have a great day, everybody.